are, I think, officially recording. Yay! There we are. We're recording. Hey, if you've got a, an electronic Bible, you can read along with me. First um, John, the fourth chapter. Now, the girls picked these songs out, what, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And um, this is this is pretty kind of crazy how it all works. So um, uh, I didn't pick out the sermon until this week, and I didn't see the songs. Listen carefully. See if you see any correlation to what we sang this morning. Dear friends, uh, John 4, excuse me, 1 John, Epistle of 1 John, chapter 4, starting in verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. Because many false spirits have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Note verse 4. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one that is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. We, we sang that this morning. I I, I stand amazed. I really do. Keep your fingers in, or keep your uh, electronic Bibles there in First John. It's what we're going to be studying today. Well, uh, in August 1983, I backed over a 45 foot tall cliff for the first time. Now there was great fear in me because, as anybody knows, backing over a cliff is not natural. Can we agree on that? Yeah. It's not natural, and and JoJo knows. <laughs> And so he actually backed off a 45 foot cliff one day with me. And so, so, but there was a friend of mine by the name of David Bean and Dave Bean, who's with the Lord now, he was killed a few years ago. Um, a, a tree fell on him. I know two different people that have been killed by trees falling on them. It's kind of weird, but, but I looked in Dave's eyes and in Dave's eyes, I saw complete assurance that what I was doing was safe. Now, I wasn't the first one to do it that day. Some of our, our junior high campers that were with us, it was, it was uh, for a wilderness camping, uh, my first wilderness camping adventure, in fact. I, they had went and everything was fine. And, and it seemed as though not only did they have a safe time, but an exciting time. So I had Dave probably triple check my harness at least. <laughs> Uh, you sure you got that tied okay? And if you just saw the worn out equipment, you you didn't. I would never have used it. Now it was bad. Oh, it was bad. But but safe, I guess. I didn't die. And so uh, I went over. I followed every every instruction to the T. Down I went down this forty five foot cliff. Got to the bottom and let out a yell, a yell of celebration and excitement. Well, today. I am the instructor at the top of the cliff and have been for a long, long time. Since 1987, I have been taking uh, groups as well as individuals out on rock climbing, repelling adventures. I, I don't know how many, I, I, between 12 and 1,500. I, I should have logged it a, a little better over the years. Um, I've dropped people from the shortest is about 40 foot. The tallest was 130 feet. I only have 150 foot of rope, so that pretty much limits on how much you can uh, you can uh, you can do down the side of any particular cliff. And I've tied. Uh, I've got these really nice harnesses that go on now. But before that, I had this this one inch webbing, and I still tie those today. Uh, a lot of our smaller kids won't fit in the pre made harnesses, so I have to make a harness right on them, and it's perfectly safe. It's not just not quite as comfortable as the factory made ones, but I've tied over a thousand of those. I hadn't tied one in about 15 years at one point. And I was amazed that when the person was standing in front of one, literally it was like a cartoon person and it was done. They were ready to go. It was absolutely amazing. And for me now, backing over a cliff with the proper equipment on, got to make that clear, it is very second nature. Now, there's always a little bit of fear. And, and I think if you talk to anybody that does any extreme sports, um, the little bit of fear keeps you safe. The little bit of fear says, I'm going to check that out one more time before I, put, I risk my life with that knot, with that rope, with that 
piece of equipment. But there's a confidence that comes with it. A confidence from doing things the right way over and over and over again and gaining success with each of those. And I got to tell you this, I have never had anybody get more than a bruise. I've never had anybody even with a serious cut from rock climbing, repelling 12 to 1500 people. It's that safe of a sport when done properly. So here we are again at the beginning of the new year. The year of our Lord, 2022, which is kind of amazing. And, and what do we know about this year? Do we know that this year is going to have some challenges? I don't know if you're shaking your head like this because it's dark. Uh, we know it's going to have some challenges. We're going to lose people that we love. We know that. Do you know what we're going to have more than anything else? Blessings. Seriously. We'll have so many more blessings than we do any other crazy challenges. It's going to be an amazing year in so many ways. And if you're lacking confidence going into this new year, then this message is especially for you. The title today is Living with Confidence in 2022. Living with Confidence in 2022. Please consider this statement that will guide us today. Confidence should be an attribute of each follower of Jesus, which comes from growing our faith and knowledge of Jesus as the Christ. Confidence, my friends. Confidence comes from growing in Jesus as a follower of his. And our, our personal confidence and faith, they're gonna, we're gonna look, we're gonna endeavor to get them growing through proper spiritual thought and discipline. And we're going to use 1 John chapter 2 today. 1 John chapter 2 as our primary focus text. So get that ready in your Bible. 1 John chapter 2 starting in verse 29. This morning we start with this, that confidence grows when the truth grows in us. Confidence grows when the truth grows in us. Now I don't know if you've caught this, we live in a world full of lies and cover-ups. Um, what is truth? Remember, Pilate asked that of Jesus. What is truth? That, that's a good question right now. Now, the hard thing we have to remember is, and it's really not that hard, once you tell the first lie, what must you do over and over and over again to protect that lie? You have to lie more. And that's why liars always get caught. Because under examination, and by the way, liars do not want to be examined. Who does a liar always want to examine? You. They want to examine the other person. They say, well, don't look at me, look at them. Ha -ha. And, and truth these days is a relative term. And, I, I, I'm, and this is why I don't trust much news these days. Because truth is dependent upon the agenda of the person telling the story. They tell the truth based upon where they want you to think. Jesus said this in John 8, 31 and 32. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, it's, it's a little confusing because this is a quote, to the Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. And here's the key to this. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. See, real truth sets us free. Real truth is that rope that I'm using to, to, for somebody to repel, it'll hold 5,500 pounds. My little 250-pound overweight body is not even a strain for that rope. But each one of those pieces of equipment will hold thousands of pounds. That's the truth. And when we, we live inside of the truth, good things happen. Now, some who claim to be part of the church fail in this matrix, the truth matrix. How do we know that? Look what, this is the Apostle John. The elder is, is who this letter is from. The elder John who writes these things for us. Go to, again, uh, 1 John chapter 2. We're going to pick this up in verse 24. See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. 
If it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. This is what he promised us, even eternal life. See, you can't change the truth. And if you live in the truth and you learn the truth, stick with the truth. Don't don't allow others to change the truth in you. And the Apostle Paul talked to us about the truth of God's Word. Keep your finger here. Uh, This is a great thing about electronic Bibles. They change the pages so easily. Go to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy, third chapter, verse 16. We're going to read into chapter 4, by the way. Very familiar scripture if you've grown up in church at all. 2 Timothy, third chapter, starting in verse 16, where it says this. We just read this a few weeks ago. All scripture is God-breathed. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Now, what do we talk about? Do people enjoy those four things? I don't enjoy being corrected, except by my wife. I I long for her to correct me every day, right? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to continue reading the Bible. It's safer that way. Verse, Verse 17. So that the man of God or the woman may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. But continue to reading. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. That's not always easy. For the time will come when men will will not put up with sound doctrine. In other words, truth. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of ministry. People try to explain away the Bible sometimes. I've heard people that were supposedly preachers and teachers try to explain away something that they don't understand. Well, listen, just because I don't understand it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's my perspective that's wrong. The Bible is truth. Let me give you some, if I, if I, this is not in the sermon notes, so Aaron Rodgers, I, I don't know that he's known for being this wise man. He's, he's a, one of the great quarterbacks of, of the NFL history. You know what he said this week? When someone says that it is confirmed science, it has quit being science and has become propaganda. Did you hear what just fell out of the mouth of a football player? When someone says, this is confirmed science, it's no longer science, it is propaganda because science is never what? Confirmed. Confirmed. Science is never satisfied. Science comes up with a hypothesis and then you go to see if that hypothesis is either correct or not. Let me give you some, the same people that say science is confirmed on so many things don't believe there's two genders. Did you hear me? There are two genders. There are people that have both. They're outside the norm. I, I, I know that. You don't need to correct me on that. There's two genders. Anybody says there's not two genders, they're not dealing in the realm of truth. Here's some truth. Climate changes. Man has no control over climate. Climate is a God thing. Hear me? Climate is a God thing. The Christian Bible is the only true source of spiritual, social truth in the the world. There is no other source of truth. Some will say, well, this agrees with the Bible. (laughs) No, but the good news is you're using the Bible as the right thing because the Bible is the unchanging source of truth. How do you know when someone's lying? when they don't want to be compared to the Bible. When they reject the Bible. And if they reject the Bible because they have some new truth, 
Change the channel. The truth of the Gospels is not popular in Sacramento, California, nor Washington, D.C. They daily try to tear down the very truth that this nation was built upon. Because as, when those truths are there, they know their lies show through. See, truth is always going to be laughed at by the popular culture. And, and I remember in the 60s when, when Christianity really started getting laughed at. Now, there's, there's also a wonderful, beautiful spiritual revolution that happened. In the, the, while the sexual revolution was going on, evangelism was exploding in America. It was really, really kind of beautiful. But what, even then, what did the media concentrate on? The sexual revolution, which you have to throw the Bible out, by the way, for the sexual revolution. You can't keep the Bible and have free sex. It doesn't work that way. The Bible has straight truth when it comes to these things. The Bible has respect for life, life from conception. The Bible over and over again talks about in the womb. Who was the first to give Mary a, a praise and to recognize Jesus? It was John the Baptist in his mother's womb who leaped for joy, his mother said, when he heard the voice of Mary. Down syndrome, mentally retarded, severely physical handicap, abort, euthanize. Because see, in our culture, those people don't have worth. Mm. Crime's out of control. Do you know why crime's out of control in most U.S. cities? Cities run by liberal progressives who say that basically nothing's wrong. Well, it's this person. They're, 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 they're disadvantaged. No, they're a criminal when they do wrong things. And the Bible says when you do wrong things, you have to not only pay restitution, which is gone in our culture, you must pay restitution, you must also pay the penalty. It's gone. See, truth, my friends, doesn't change. Look again. Read our, read our, our, our focus scripture, verse 24 and 25 again. See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. Don't, don't let something else change you. If it does... You will remain in the Son and in the Father. This is what he promised us, eternal life. Eternal life doesn't come on our terms. The truth is this. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. There is no other way to go to God the Father except through Jesus Christ. There isn't 12 different ways. There isn't... There's only one way, and it's through Jesus. He is the door. He is the way, the truth, the life. He is the Savior, the only Savior. And yes, the Christian Bible is the only source that you can find out about Jesus. Oh, there's all the other books about Jesus, all the other songs about Jesus. Beautiful, wonderful. But if you want to know how to get to God, use the Christian Bible, the source. And when you do, my friends, you will have confidence. And I want you to understand, I walk through life pretty confident. You can too. But you got to have the right source of truth. So we need truth growing in us to have confidence, but it's impossible without this second area this morning. Secondly, confidence grows when the Holy Spirit grows in us. Confidence grows when the Holy Spirit grows in us. Now, we already read from 1 John 4, 1 through 4, that the spirit of the Antichrist is out there. And it's always been out there. Uh, the Antichrist, I grew up in the 70s. So, man, we, that's when Hal Lindsey and Lake Ray Planet Earth and all this other stuff was going on. And uh, I, we were told this Antichrist person. And there is going to be an Antichrist person. But there are many Antichrists out there. And they're in the church the church is the most dangerous place for the Antichrist because they look like one of the sheep. But what does the Bible say? They're a wolf in sheep's clothing. The Antichrist and, the, and teachers and spirits are all around us all the time. And these are warnings. There are warnings throughout the epistles about staying with the truth and spiritual safety. And here's another warning that, that, that is given right here in our focus text today. Look at verse 26 with me. 
I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray, the Antichrist. As for you, the anointing, I want you to think about that anointing now, the anointing you receive from him, Jesus, remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as, but as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it is taught you, remain in him. Anointing. What is, what is he, what's he talking about? All the followers of Jesus Christ have an anointing. It's the Holy Spirit, friends. It's real simple. It is the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that works with God's word. Again, I grew up in the 70s, man. We had the, the charismatic, the Pentecostal movement was going crazy. And some of it, it was all based on feelings and emotions. There's a balance that you have to have. You have to have God's word with the Holy Spirit. If you have God's word without the Holy Spirit, you're going to have legalism. If you have all this excitement with the Spirit, but not God's word, you're going to have people chasing their emotions. It's together, friends, God's Holy Spirit with God's truth. Those together are an amazing team working inside of us. And, and it's what Jesus talked about. Look what Jesus promised. The night he was betrayed, he promised his disciples this uh, it, it, just before he was taken. In John, the 16th chapter, the gospel of John this time, gets a little confusing. Same guy wrote both books. This is the gospel of John, chapter 16. Going to pick it up in verse 12. Gospel of John, chapter 16, picking it up in verse 12. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. Boy, that night, especially at the Last Supper. But when he, the spirit of truth, remember pneuma, the breath of truth, the, the Holy Ghost, you can do that. that it's all the same words. Or the, the, the spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all truth. Wow. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only when he hears. And he will tell you what is to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you truth again and that belongs all that belongs to the father is mine that is why i said the spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you you have to have the holy spirit with the word of god they, they can't be separated i'm blown away by how the holy spirit has been opened in my heart I'm reading Ezekiel right now. If you're having a bad week, don't read Ezekiel. Take it off the reading list. It's bad. <laughs> they were messed up. And what is Ezekiel's job was every day? Son of man, go tell the elders of Israel they're messed up every day. He was listening to that spirit that was inside of him. See, the Holy Spirit is our guide to truth. It's our tutor. I need a tutor. How about you? Okay, you take, we take lessons. We want to get better at something. I want to get better at truth. I want to get better at the Bible. The Holy Spirit is my lesson giver. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. And we each get the Holy Spirit when we're born again at baptism. What, is, what does Acts 2.38 say? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift is for you and for those that are far off, for your children. My friends, when you accept Christ, you do the five things we teach you. Believe, confess, have faith, repent, and be baptized. You receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, does that mean you're going to do something miraculous? It, you might. I can't say you are. I can't say that you're not. The Spirit is the one who controls that, not Ken A's camp. But you get an anointing promised by Jesus. And that anointing is part of that promise. And it is, and you hear me say this before, I believe the Holy Spirit is the best thing about becoming a, 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 to Christ. I love the thought of eternal life. But how real is eternal life for me right now when I'm getting bad news? The Holy Spirit is in me right now. The Holy Spirit comforts me right now. The Holy Spirit right now leads me in righteousness. 
is my tutor, my motivator, my comforter, my, the one who comes alongside of me. And I need daily that help. I also need a, a dose of God's word daily. If you're not getting into God's word daily, you are not serious about confidence in your life. You have to have the word of God in you daily. Now, there's some other things that go along with that too. Go to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. This is a real simple scripture. It's, these are eight bullet points. I don't know that Paul knew he was teaching in bullet points when he wrote this down. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. These are beautiful, simple. Every verse is, is basically a bullet point here. Look what it starts. It starts off, be joyful always, verse 16. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Be joyful always. Pray continually. There's, there's two bullet points in two verses. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Three bullet points. Next one, do not put out the Spirit's fire. Some will say don't quench the Spirit. All means the same thing. And it's about pouring a bucket of water on a fire. Don't, don't quench the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecy with contempt. Test everything. How much are we supposed to test? Everything. You think that's a trusted news source? Test it spiritually. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. See those eight things? Those are the eight things you and I have to practice every day if we want to grow in our spiritual confidence. So we combine the truth with the Holy Spirit and we get an amazing combination. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 22. If you didn't get it, it's in your outline, by the way. So greater is the Holy Spirit that is in each follower of Jesus than the devil, than those spirits of the Antichrist that are in the world. And they are here right now. When you have the truth and you have the Holy Spirit growing in you, there's just one more area you need to grow. Thirdly, confidence grows when good fruit grows in us. Good fruit grows in us. Now, as followers of Jesus, we must endeavor to do right, to produce good fruit. And when we do, at the rapture, we will have confidence and joy. Look what John says next, verse 28 and 29 of 1 John, 2nd chapter, verse 28, 29. And now, dear children, continue in Him so that when He appears, obviously that's Christ, we may be confident and unashamed before Him at His coming. Sidebar, what do you want Jesus to catch you doing at the rapture? Praying. <laughs> praying, that's a good one. I'd like to be praying. I'd rather not be... Oh, I could name 20 things. <laughs> so, so, so it's back to building good practices into our life. Look at verse 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. Friends, we have to do right acts. We have to bear good fruit. Now, this is not religious acts. We talked about religion last week in the message, and and if you didn't get to see that, I hope that you'll review that. Because religion is dangerous. We do religious things with our brains shut off. Um, we don't use the Lord's Prayer here at this church. There's churches that say the Lord's Prayer every week aloud. I, 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 that's not a bad thing, except for one thing. Most of you, if you've grown up in church, can do the Lord's Prayer without thinking about a single word. That's a religious act that does not touch your heart. Use the Lord's Prayer. Think about every word. That, that's what we're talking about here. Doing good things. And when we faithfully love God, the Father, and Jesus, then we will want to do acts of love that show that to them. We, want, we will do acts of love that bring them glory. This is what good fruit is. And Jesus places a high importance on doing works of love. Now, we're done here in 1 John. We're going to run over to John 15, the Gospel of John again, 15. You can't read the, the, the epistle of 1st, 2nd, or 3rd John without getting to the Gospel of John. Gospel of John is the background material for this. The Gospel of John, we believe, was written first. 
Then he wrote John 1, 2, and 3 of the epistles, and then probably Revelation just before he died. But in John 15, look at verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that has been thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. Does that sound like fun? Sounds like judgment. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Now, that's a scripture I have memorized. How do we show ourselves to be a disciple of Jesus? By bearing much fruit. Good fruit. What do you do with bad fruit? Toss it. It goes on the ground. Watch them tomato pickers. Big potato, 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 potato machines, tomato machines. They've got usually at least four people. It's usually women. Yes, they're usually Hispanic, Latinos. And what they're doing is they are literally standing there throwing bad fruit over their shoulder. The bad fruit goes back on the ground. Do you want to be on the ground or do you want to be in the basket? The basket, my friends. You and I need to bear good fruit. And what is the good fruit we are to bear? We read on. Verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you remain in my commands, uh uh-oh, we don't like that. The world doesn't like that. The world doesn't want to live by anybody's standards, but their own, exactly. But if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. We're to do what Jesus did again. Jesus didn't live a life any way he wanted to. He did it by his father's commands. I've told you this, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. How is your joy complete? By following the commands of Jesus. Here it is, verse 12. My command is this. Agape is the word here. Love each other as I have agape you, as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, then he lay down his life for his friends. In verse 14, you are my friends if you do what I command. Well, that's a pretty narrow view of life, Jesus. Do you hang with people that you don't like what they do? No, none of us do. They're out being stupid. I had lots of friends who were stupid on a regular basis. When they were with me, they couldn't do that. They didn't drink when they were with me. Okay, you hear me? They couldn't smoke in my car. Those were my rules. When we run with Jesus, he's got some rules for us. Follow the rules. It's real simple. The rules don't hurt you. If you think the rules of Jesus hurt you, you're not reading the rule book right. The rules are to protect us and keep us in that narrow place where there's safety. You know, my it's the old thing. You're on a two-lane road. You got a yellow double line going down the middle. You got a white line there. You stay between the lines. When you stay between the lines and everybody else stays between the lines, how much danger really is there? But you get somebody coming at you that decides they don't want to play by those rules. How dangerous is that? You decide you want to play outside the lines great danger it's just that simple so when we combine pursuit of the truth and the holy spirit what grows out of that is good fruit and the kingdom of our lord will grow because others will see that in our lives and friends unless we combine the spirit and the truth in our lives we can't bear good fruit because Unless we combine spirit and truth, we are just doing acts by our own power. I don't want to do that. I want Christ at the center of all that I do. Good fruit to God's glory needs to be what builds confidence in our lives. In 1984, Jim Monteith, who's with the Lord now, took me under his tutorage. 
And uh, uh, I was running the wilderness camping program for the, for the St. Louis area for our churches there. And uh, Jim used to take us on all these adventures. And he was the rock climbing, repelling certified person. He was, uh, he was the, the high and low rope certified person. And so slowly but surely, I began to get all my certifications when it looked like I was going to do this for a few years. And it was, there, was, there were three different weekends I had to give up to, to do that. And uh, so in 1986, it was time for me to get my rock climbing and repelling certification. And we went out to this place that's owned by the St. Louis County Parks Department. And uh, they have very, very restrictive rules, okay, for safety. Uh, the, the, the 100, the, we used to call it Site 108 because it was off the 108 highway. That was about 120 foot repels. Um, there was no room for error. So we were out there that day on that Sunday. And we had a pretty good sized group. There was probably 30 of us. I've been working with Jim now. This was my uh, third season working with Jim. And I was supposed to be one of the other students, right? He looked at me and said, Ken, you take those 15 over there and run them through blah, 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 and tell me how they do. See, I had worked with the master. And I had learned well from the master. Jim trusted me with his life and the life of those 15 others. And about 1,200 people since. Get yourself underneath someone that knows what they're doing. Learn from a master. That's the Holy Spirit. You got guidebooks. That's, that's the Christian Bible. And then walk in confidence. And again, if you haven't noticed, pretty confident guy. I'm also confident on the top of a rock. All followers of Jesus are called to do the same. To do what? To walk in him daily. Get in God's word daily. Pray to God daily. Seek to live in love like Jesus. Let's see. Daily. Some of us were called to preach too. That, that's not for everybody here. That's just for some of us. That, that's me. So followers of Jesus Christ, minus the preaching part, commit to these things. Become a 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 22 disciple, follower of Jesus. And then watch how your confidence grows in every area of your life and how the blessings come as well. Need some help with that? Then let me know. Let's pray. Father, love you. Lights or no lights, Father, I pray that we got the message across this morning, your message. Because, Father, you want us to live in confidence. Confidence in our daily lives and confidence that we will be in eternity with you. Love you so much, Father. Thank you for those that put up with this cold and this dark place today. What a, what a first Sunday of the year, Father. you got, got such a great sense of humor. Love you. Can't wait to be with you. Bless those that are here and those that will listen to this in the weeks to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let me get this finished up so we get our coats on. I'm a little cold, but it's getting colder, isn't it? It's getting colder. Coldest day of the year, we don't have any power. Okay, normal stuff this week, Tuesday night, our house uh, for Bible study. Friday night this week is a uh, 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 practice. We got uh, some boxes of cereal you can't see. It gets cereal to me or to the church uh, by uh, Thursday noonish. Uh, to uh, to the uh, uh, the gathering. So if you got cereal, bring it up here. We'll get that. If not, get it to me Wednesday night. I always see Peter at a prayer meeting on Thursday morning, and uh, that's when I'm I'm handing off stuff. Cereal this week uh, in any shape or form. Don't don't buy something you wouldn't eat yourself. That's kind of a rule. Okay, you don't know that one. There's a new one. Hey, love y'all. Anything? Oh, uh, uh, hey, you're supposed to be waving at uh, Mary. <laughs> If you want to sign up to give to uh, sponsor donuts for a week, see Mary, and uh, she'll have a light and be, sign you up. And so, uh, see Mary for that. Anything else I'm missing? I'm looking at you. So, hey out there, love you. Thanks for tuning into the dark. Here, here, here's 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 my view today. Here, here's my view of the people today. That's it. That's it. Yeah, and even even the emergency lights are getting a little yellow. Imagine you notice how that. happier we're going to be next week. <laughs> it's it's always an adventure being at the adventure christian church love y'all have a great week bye-bye